about y'all, but I'm hungry. Start with these lamb chops. Go for it. Go for it. I'm a lamb chop guy, aficionado. I'm to get some of this. Here you go. Greens. Thank you, brother. I'm a rice person. Sorry, I get some of that ham <laughs> hops in there. There you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. When the last time y'all sat down and had a meal like this? The womb. The womb. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last time. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a minute, honestly, for me, I have to say. Now, I'm going to my mom's house tonight. Okay. So, this will be the first time okay. I have a home cooked meal in a very long time. Mm. I get my family together once a month, typically on one Sunday a month, and mm -hmm. kind of preserving what my grandmother used to do. Really? So, yeah, yeah. So, so what do you cook? Just depends on the time, depends man. The time. If it's Super Bowl or if it's something else. But how's it been for you, like, being an emerging chef, you know? in this industry, you know, do you feel supported? Let's talk real for a second. I feel like I have like a mix. So like a couple of months ago, I was uh, able to kind of like start doing things with the uh, the Black and Limited Development Program with Walmart. Yeah. I was like, it's been a really interesting thing. Like I have my times where I feel like I have a lot of the support. I have my times where I don't feel like I have it. Um, I even have those moments of like wrestling with myself between like, I really, really want to like run this food content thing and this really isn't what I really want to be cooking as a chef, you know? So, like, it's yeah, been really interesting. You want interesting. to stay authentic to yourself. I want to stay authentic to myself. caricature. Yeah. You, we don't have to be divided. We can have our own opinions and still be yeah. v validated because we're not a monolith. And That's everybody right. has, you know, their own ways they do and, and food is about your own style, your own perspective, how you feel in it, how you want to eat it. Especially black you food. You know? Right. Especially, especially black, black food. food. Funny enough, my earliest food memory is a goosey, a goosey soup, yeah. which is, you know, yeah. a West African sure. stew of like melon seeds and, you know, crayfish powder mm -hmm. and pumpkin leaves. And, you know, we, we were growing up, we didn't have a lot, first mm -hmm. of all, but also whatever we're eating, you're eating as right. a baby. That's right. how it right. was. So they just put it in the blender and it was spicy. I just remember eating it like yeah. being in an arm mm -hmm. and sure. getting that sure. in, in, in my mouth. and. It was just an explosion of flavors, and it's always been like stamped in the memory bank. Like growing up, the food just had a lot more care mm -hmm. centered around it yeah. in terms of how it was prepared, how it was presented, yeah. even. And so now you get a lot of the kind of the, this rush to yeah. to enjoy and to experience, and so you you miss a piece of that element. And so when we have times like this and are able to sit around a table that someone actually made this food, they spent the time. They put the effort in, you know, it kind of is reminiscent of, you know, growing up because mm -hmm. that was when the aunts and uncles and all just kind of pitched in. I see this cake over here. My aunt made seven up cake all mm -hmm. the time. You don't really get that as much. And so, like I said, just try to uh, relive that as much as possible. My grandmother, actually, she started teaching me to cook because I wanted to play with the fire on the glass stove, gas stove. She was like, you're not about to burn my house down, so I'm going to show you how to use it. So <laughs> that's, all heard that I, I kind of stumbled into learning how to, um, cook, you know, she spent a lot of time letting me just experiment. I mean, even the things that I do right now today and my first chocolate was called Mama Jean. It was named after her mate with sweet potatoes because they grew sweet potatoes. In, what, what in was it? Winter. So a sweet potato, milk chocolate bonbon. Okay. And so because she made sweet potato pies, sweet potato casserole, roasted sweet potatoes, mm -hmm. sweet potato fritters, et cetera, et cetera, because that's some, one of the things that they grew on their it's creative. Land. It's a creative exercise, yeah, you know, yeah, and, and a outlet. creative release. Sure. Um, I had the same thing growing up. My mom, you know, she had the catering company, and I had to help her cook or whatever, but I couldn't go mm -hmm. to these events. So I was left alone at home with a babysitter and a bunch of ingredients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that those were my toys. Sure. You know, I would make things, like you said, maybe we're not going to eat this, but, like, at least right. you were able to express yourself creatively. That can go to a craft. I think it's so beautiful because if a dish tells a story, it has a soul. Right. You know, you're not just Absolutely. cooking for perfect seasoning, which is a prerequisite. Yeah. Right. You're cooking to share something with someone sure. and continue to pass that down. Yeah. And I think that's what's happened with a lot of our food ways. It's just passed down stories. And so, and the same thing with working with Walmart, it's all about storytelling, really, because yeah. what we're doing with them is saying, hey, let's go find black chefs, black creatives, and tell the, particularly through food, and tell those stories uh, in activations that we're gonna do and that sort of thing. So 
I know that we've been, you know, definitely taking time to kind of talk about like how much of a beautiful like experience this has been, like just a beautiful like experience to have like us as black men, like at this table, like in this space, sharing community, all that. But I definitely have to say it's a very, very powerful experience for me as well. Just kind of sitting here around other like black men and like food and definitely knowing even at that time, I even watched TV, did not see a lot of us mm -hmm. like in that space. Right. So it's like really, really interesting now being here, kind of like getting to this point of like starting to break into food media, mm -hmm. um, uh, thing like how's like the journey stuff like been for you? It's been a rough road, man. It's been rough. Um, you know, I, I started really young. I started working in like some of the best restaurants in the world. And those places, there weren't people that really looked like me. You know, even when I started in food media, you know, I remember being on television, they're like, you're not really good enough to be on TV, so like, why don't you just be a backup for people? Mm -hmm. Or being deemed lazy before I even like spoke because of the color of my skin. And then the team later admitting, we, we just haven't worked with a lot of black people before. And then breaking into it, you know, further on, it's been, it's been difficult, but it's also been extremely rewarding because I wasn't doing it for any of the admiration of, of the people that mm -hmm. were the naysayers, whatever. Because the naysayers are always going to be around you. They're always going to be trying to kick you when you're down, you know. But the people that really love you are going to extend an arm out and try to lift yeah. you up. So it, it's been the experience that it's supposed to have been. Could it have been easier? Hell yeah. A lot of things could be easier, but it makes it that much more worth it when it comes down to it because I fought to get here. I know my worth. And I think we still have a long way to go, though, because it, it doesn't just, the buck doesn't stop with us as creators. It starts with, you know, food writers sure. of color. It starts with food critics of color that have a cultural connection to our cuisine. There's a reason why there's not a lot of, you know, Black-owned Michelin-starred restaurants, because they're not seeking out that cuisine. Right. And it also lends me to think, like, where do we want to be in 10 years? Yeah. Like, yeah. what do you think about that? Like, what do you, in 10 years, in a ideal state, where do you think we should be? In 10 years, I, I, I see us, you know, capitalizing off of the industry as it grows because we see brands investing more into creatives uh, on the food media side and in the kitchen. And so that's, that's really a telltale sign when you start seeing businesses like yours, like yours, like mine, scaling continually and we start getting those $100 million, $500 million, billion dollar valuations from my perspective, that's what I'm looking at in 10 years. I've been looking at this cake this whole meal, <laughs> so we got to get into it. Let's do it. That was a good dinner.